What do you think it takes to be successful in life? A high degree of qualification? A lot of money? I don't think so. Most certainly, studies are an integral part of one's life, no doubt. But the actual driving force is the sense of competition, but in a good way. The hunger to know more is what will help you on the path of success. The hunger to know more. And such is the story of this scientist about whom we shall read in the chapter The Making of a Scientist, written by Robert W. Peterson. Talking about the author, Robert W. Peterson was born in 1925 and was an American newspaper writer. Later on, he became a freelance author of magazine articles and sometimes books, especially those on sports and scouting. His Negro League baseball article of the 1970 newspaper entitled Only the Ball Was White was highly acclaimed. This article, it's also an article, The Making of a Scientist, is an account of Richard Ebright, who has received the Seal Scholarship Award and the Scaring Plow Award for Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. It was his fascination for butterflies that opened the world of science to him. Let's read more about the article. Find out about this amazing man. The Making of a Scientist by Robert W. Peterson. At the age of 22, a former Scout of the Year excited the scientific world with a new theory on how cells work. Richard H. Ebright and his college roommate explained the theory in an article in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. It was the first time this important scientific journal had ever published the work of college students. In sports, that would be like making the big leagues at the age of 15 and hitting home a run your first time at bat. For Richard Ebright, it was the first in a long string of achievements in science and other fields. And it all started with butterflies. An only child, Ebright grew up north of Reading, Pennsylvania. There wasn't much I could do there, he said. I certainly couldn't play football or baseball with a team of one. But there was one thing I could do. Collect things. So he did. And did he ever? Beginning in kindergarten, Ebright collected butterflies with the same determination that has marked all his activities. He also collected rocks, fossils and coins. He became an eager astronomer too, sometimes stargazing all night. From the first, he had a driving curiosity along with a bright mind. He also had a mother who encouraged his interest in learning. She took him on trips, bought him telescopes, microscopes, um, cameras, mounting materials and other equipment and helped him in many other ways. I was his only companion until he started school, his mother said. After that, I would bring home friends for him. But at night, we just did things together. Richie was my whole life after his father died, when Richie was in third grade. She and her son spent almost every evening at the dining room table. If he didn't have things to do, I found work for him. Not physical work, but learning things, his mother said. He liked it. He wanted to learn. And learn he did. He earned top grades in school. On everyday things, he was just like every other kid, his mother said. By the time he was in the second grade, Ebright had collected all 25 species of butterflies found around his hometown. That probably would have been the end of my butterfly collecting, he said. But then my mother got me a children's book called The Travels of Monarch the Tenth. That book 
which told how monarch butterflies migrate to Central America, opened the world of science to the eager young collector. At the end of the book, readers were invited to help study butterfly migrations. They were asked to tag butterflies for research by Dr. Frederick A. Urkath of the University of Toronto, Canada. Ibrite's mother wrote to Dr. Urkath and soon Ibrite was attaching light adhesive tags to the wings of monarchs. Anyone who found a tagged butterfly was asked to send the tag to Dr. Urkath. The butterfly collecting season around Reading lasts six weeks in late summer. If you're going to chase them one by one, you won't catch very many. So the next step for Ibright was to raise a flock of butterflies. He would catch a female monarch, take her eggs and raise them in his basement through their life cycle from egg to caterpillar to pupa to adult butterfly. Then he would tag the butterfly's wings and let them go. For several years in his basement was home to thousands of monarchs in different stages of development. Eventually, I began to lose interest in tagging butterflies. It's tedious and there's not much feedback, Ibright said. In all the time I did it, he laughed. Only two butterflies I had tagged were recaptured and they were not more than 75 miles from where I lived. This sounds very interesting. But before we read further, let's understand this part in detail. The article is about Richard H. Ebright, who published the theory of how cells work in an article in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science at the age only of 22. Talking about Ebright's early life, he grew up in a place called Reading, which is in Pennsylvania. And unlike most children, he was not able to, you know, play football or basketball or baseball. But one thing he could do was collect things, and he did that. So while in kindergarten, when he was really small, Ebright collected butterflies. He also collected things like rocks, fossils, and coins sometimes. He would observe the sky at night too. He lived with his mum, who encouraged his interest in learning. She would take him on trips. She would buy him telescopes, microscopes, cameras, mounting materials, basically other materials that's required for learning. And at a very early age, Ibright had lost his father. His mother would discuss things with him every night and give him mental exercises instead of physical exercises, which he very much wanted to learn. By the time he was in the second grade, Ibright had collected all the 25 species of butterflies that were found around in his hometown. You see, the box is here. This chart gives an account of the species and subspecies of butterflies collected in six weeks only. This butterfly collection of Richard Ebright continued when his mother gave him a children's book titled The Travels of Monarch. This particular book told how monarch butterflies migrate to Central America, thus opening the world of science to this young little boy. At the end of the book, the readers were invited to help study butterfly migration. They were asked to tag the butterflies for research by Dr. Frederick A. Urkath of the University of Toronto, which is in Canada. Now, anyone who found a tagged butterfly was requested to send the tag to Dr. Urkath. You see, the butterfly collecting season in Reading, which is in Pennsylvania, lasts like about, what, six weeks? in the late summer. Richard knew that trying to catch them one by one was not quite the right thing. So he started to raise a flock of butterflies. He would catch the female monarch in particular, take her eggs, raise them in his basement through their life cycle. You know how it works from egg to caterpillar to pupa to adult butterfly at the end. This graph here shows the number and kinds of butterflies that can be collected in six weeks. So once these butterflies turned into adults, Richard would tag them. 
They would tag the wings and then let them go. For several years, his basement was just home to thousands and thousands of monarchs in different stages of development. But as the time passed, he began to lose interest in tagging butterflies. It's a tedious process, you know. You see, and Ibright didn't really receive much feedback for the same thing. But do you think this young boy would give up so soon? We still have a lot more to read about this in the upcoming session. Until then, stay tuned and stay smiling. Goodbye. Tutomate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.